In this video, we're going to cover how to set up a processing program. Um, processing is both the name of the language that we're going to learn, as well as the application in which you write your code. Um, the application is known as an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment, um, and that's what you call any application in which you wrote code. And as I said, same name, the application is called Processing and the language is called Processing. To open it up, I'm going to go to the Spotlight Search, type in Processing, hit enter, and the application will open. Um, if you are opening Processing on a school computer, you'll probably get a pop-up asking you if you want to upgrade to the latest version of Processing. Just say no, you can't do that on a school computer. However, when you download Processing at home, you are more than welcome to upgrade to a later version. It will definitely work if you bring your programs from home in here, even if you have a more recent version of the Processing application. Okay, so this is um, your editor in this white space with these um, numbered lines. This is where you will write your code. Down here in the console, this is where you'll see um, errors that pop up. Um, you can see errors line by line if there are more than one of them. If you click over the errors tab up here, this is the button to run code and this is the button to stop it. Um, here you'll see this tab has the same name as the file name up in the um, file bar here. Processing Programs are called sketches um, and are automatically given the name of sketch and then the date is 18 for the year, 01 for the month, 17 for the day, and then the letter after it is um, it's just, this is the first one I've opened. If I opened up another one, I'd have automatically get a B. When you save a processing sketch, you need to save it with a name that has only letters and numbers, um, no spaces, underscores are okay. So if you go to save as, you'll want to give it a name, um, with just letters and numbers. If, for example, you put a space in your um, the name, it will correct that for you. The other thing, please note, that processing automatically wants to save in a folder that it's made for you called processing. On school computers, it's really hard to navigate to that, so I recommend changing um, to save in the desktop. If your view looks different, if your view looks like this and you're trying to save it to the desktop and desktop isn't one of these choices, you can always click this arrow to expand um, and you'll be able to navigate using this uh, menu bar as well as the drop down menu and you'll be able to find desktop. So if I save this now you'll see it tells me the sketch name had to be modified. They can only um, use letters and numbers. It needs to be less than 64 characters. So what it's done here is just put a little underscore there. What you also may notice is that it's created a folder with the same name as um, my file name. And all processing programs need to be contained inside a folder with the same name. So if I double click on that folder, you'll see this is the file itself, example one under, um, with an underscore, .pde, that's the file extension for a processing program. Um, this is going to become important later when we talk about uploading it to Haiku um, because we need to keep that file inside a folder. So I'll come back to that. However, so I'm back here in my example one um, getting ready to, to write my first couple lines of code. The first thing that we're actually going to cover has nothing to do with code itself. It's a way to make notes in your code um, that, the, that the program won't process as um, code itself. So if I wanted to write, for example, like Aaron's you know, program, I'm going to get a bunch of errors because processing saying, I don't know what to do with that. That is not code I can use. It's, it's invalid. Um, so if I ever want to put a note, as you should, like your name or, um, also important, acknowledgments, you're going to need to do it using something called comments. And comments are a way that programmers can leave, um, sort of annotate their code um, with notes about what parts mean, what's happening where. It's really useful if you're collaborating. It's really useful if you're working on a big project and you have to come back to it later that you've been able to leave yourself some comments. Um, and you're, you as a group will be using comments as we go through this course. Um, but to start out with, we're just going to comment um, to add your name and acknowledgments. So to 
turn this instead of something that the processing is trying to turn into code, if you put two forward slashes, and the forward slashes is in the lower right hand side of the keyboard, it shares the space with the question mark, all of a sudden it turns kind of light gray, do the same thing as acknowledgements, um, and then you won't have an error there any longer, You'll be, um, it won't be trying to process this any longer as code. So, comments. They'll be very handy. We'll keep coming back to comments throughout the semester. Now, to actually write some code. The only thing we're going to do in this video um, is to make an output window that we can add to. Um, as I've mentioned, processing is a program, um, programming language I really love because it automatically has a visual or graphic output. It's really easy to make um, illustrations, animations, um, uh, visuals of all kinds. So, but to make any of those things, we need to have an output window somewhere where the, co uh, the animations or illustrations or whatever they may be um, will exist. So to do that, the command is size, and size is the size of the output window. And the first one we're going to make is 500, comma, 500. I'm going to close this parentheses that I opened, and I'm going to put a semicolon. So any function that you add will turn blue, like size did. It's case sensitive. This needs to be a lowercase s. I need to open a parentheses and close the parentheses. And this is where I add something called parameters. Um, parameters are information that you give to the function to be more specific. 500, 500 here. Um, is the width of the output window I want, and then the height of the output window. Um, they need to be separated by a comma, and you need to end this line with a semicolon. A semicolon in many, many programming languages is like a period. It's how the program knows that line is over. So I'm going to hit the Run button, and I will get my 500 by 500 window. Um, if anybody wants to take a guess what the units of measure 500 and 500 are in. I'll give a brief pause while you can consider that, or you can hit pause on this video. Um, but the answer is pixels. So those are the little tiny units of light that make up this display. Um, the number of pixels in a screen is dependent on the resolution of the screen itself. Um, on a computer, I, I could find out if I look in system preferences and open up displays. You can see right now um, I have 1,280 by 800 pixels in this display that I'm working with. So you can make the, your output window any size you want, but it needs to fit on this screen. Um, so if you wanted to see it, you know, if I did 1,000 by 500, it's going to be wider, but no taller. Um, I usually, for almost all examples, stick by with 500, 500, mostly because it's easy to see both the code and the screen in one view. But you can make yours bigger if you want. Um, it does have to fit on the screen, though. All right, so our output window right now is super boring. It's gray. It's got not a lot going on. So the next thing we're going to do is change its color, the output window. So the function to change the background color of the output window is background. Background tends to trip people up because sometimes people forget that background has a G in it and they write background. Um, programming is very fussy. You have um, It's often case sensitive, like processing is always case sensitive. Most languages are. Um, it, computers are not really great at guessing what you meant. They're really great at doing what you tell them to do. And if you misspell something, they get confused. All right. So that being said, now we need to choose a color for our back one window. Everybody can choose what they like. Um, and the way you choose it is you're going to go up to the Tools menu. You're going to choose Color Selector. And then here, you've got um, a big square with some shades of red. And here, you see all the color families. So if you want something that's more in the blue shade, click on the column to choose the blue families. As you go, you can see. So once you get the color family you like, then you can click on the big square itself, and whatever is in this little rectangle here is going to be the color that you have currently selected. So let me choose, I guess I'll choose this turquoise one. Um, and then it's this six digit code down here that is the, um, the color that corresponds here. So this code um, corresponds to this color. The um, letters here stand for hue, saturation, brightness, then 
red, green, and blue, RGB, and we'll come back to um, using RGB to represent color later, but for right now, all you have to do is copy this, including um, the pound sign or hash mark. So I'm gonna, you can either Command C or you can actually hit this copy button. I'm going to close this window. I'm Command V to paste it. You could also go to Edit, Choose Paste if you wish. I've gotta close the parentheses, add another semicolon, and there you are, big blue window. Much more exciting. Um, this is another place I could use a comment if I wanted to remember that this code was blue, if it was something I wanted to come back to in the future. You could use a comment right there to, um, to remind yourself that that code was a shade of blue. So that's the end of this video. The next one we'll pick up and we're going to um, starting to add some, some other elements to this program that we are developing.